The Raspberry Pi Zero is an even smaller form factor of the original RPI-1 released back in November 2015 with a wireless version which this model is released in 2017. The CPU is a 1 GHz ARM version 6 chip and includes a whopping 512 MB of RAM. Now our question is though, can you run Gen 2 on it in 2024? Really? Cheeky hand a bit right now. Um, yeah, so you've seen me install Gen 2 on the Raspberry Pi many times, you've seen the build process by now. Um, but this is just it booting up correctly. Uh, this is just the normal uh, muscle stage. Um, in fortified head so this time just to uh, start some new features in Gen 2. Let's see how it works. Which basically should make it more secure, but obviously doesn't protect it from my own stupidity because nothing can protect me from that. Um so yeah, as you can see it's booting up quite well right now. So the boot up process it takes about um about a minute. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but when you consider that you won't be turning this off and on very often, um it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'm quite pleased for that, especially for an old CPU that's single core and um, one gigahertz. Um, but my question is, how long would it take us to build its own kernel actually directly onto the device? And is it worth even compiling any software on such a weak hardware? Let's find out and build a 6.1 kernel. drive set up so first of all we're going to use fdisk on uh, flash dev slash sda that's right we'll do a print to see what we got so we've got one one terabyte hard drive space we're going to split this up into two one for um the porch tree and the other for disk files so what we'll do is delete and then we'll do it new we'll do a primary partition one first set through will be that we'll do this one at five gig i don't see it ever needing to be more than that yes okay then we do a new we do a primary partition two okay then we write those and there we go 
Okay. So we'll do mount xfsc slash dev sda1. That alright. And then we do the same again for two. There we go. Alright, next thing we need to do is remove uh, var db repos gen2. Because we don't need that anymore. It's going to be our new drive. Sorry, our new partition space. Too long. Uh, and then we need to delete var uh, slash cache test files which luckily didn't take too long at all right so the next thing we need to do is mount these drives so mount slash dev sda1 slash var db repos gen2 i messed that command up didn't i hmm? Okay, let's try that again. It's the A1 slash. You can see my uh, handbook skills coming out there. Gen Z. Perfect, that will mount. And then we'll do the same again, but this time for cache files. SDA2 slash bar db uh, no this cache this draws okay next thing to do is to set up fstab so slash dev sda1 and what this will do is always automatically boot the drives to the correct place so I don't have to do it manually like I just did then so that would be var db repos gen2 and xfc and no a time and then zero one we'll do the same again sda2 slash uh, var cache List files. Looks of SC, no A time, and 0, 1. Okay, so if we go and check the thing of mount now, we'll see we've got those. And if we do DFH, we can see the drives are all there. So if we try and do an emerge sync now, this should and it should now we'll start filling up on the drive so let's see how that does didn't take too long did it okay so let's next get the export set up Which will be with right nano slash etc slash exports. There we go. Now we have the file that we were missing earlier on. Okay, so all we need to do is set up this to accept any. Uh, mount from inside my network. So, I'm going to do a slash var slash db slash repos repos slash gen2 and then 192.196.0 
connect dot zero slash twenty four so anything on the network can connect and we'll go for insecure read write sync no subtree check okay and then we'll do the same again for slash the cache list files I changed that one above because apparently, I, oh my good god, I can't press the run before today. Insecure. Read right. Sync. No subtree check. Yep, we'll just double check that they're working and then it should just be a case of making sure the files are okay. So that should be export fs r and b. Okay, and then we got one wrong, so gonna have a look for that. There we go. There we go, so they're now exported. Uh, what we'll also do is we'll add this to updates, so that'll be RC update, add NFC, NFC, yep, and then add that to default. Then this will get started every time the system boots, which is what we want. Let's do RC service uh, start. Oops, the way around in it. That's uh that's not too good. Uh, we'll go and check that out on the live system in a second, but before we do, let's just go and see how much space these are taking. Okay, so we're using just under a gig for the repo and hmm, apparently we're using 18 gig for the fix. Oh, that'll be because it takes off normal, um, a bit of storage up and it for um, in case it fills up. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, what we'll do is we're going to go move over to the live system. And, um, sorry, to the, one of my normal systems and see if we can mount it. Okay, so after a quick reboot, we've got everything running. Uh, we're now on the main computer, which is Daddy Pig, and we're going to try and connect via NFS to uh, Grandpa Pig, which is the Raspberry Pi. So we've got the command ready for that. That's that connected. We're then going to do the command for mounting cache files. Disk files, and then that'll just be our cache files. Perfect. Right, we'll do an emerge web sync now just to get everything up and running. Right, okay, now apparently it's not melt. Uh, let's have a look. What's going on here? It should be read write, which we are. Let's go and check that out quickly. After a little bit of time, that's this done. Now I've got um, the port snapshot open and gone. As you can see, we've got the files. Let's have a quick look, see if we can download some binaries. We'll do an emerge f fetch. This little GCC, and that should pick up the latest version of. GCC um, and download it to this file for me.
We'll let that run quickly. There we go, we're downloading it nearly about 10 megabytes per second. Seven there, obviously. Do you think that's taking a bit longer than four seconds? Then? Thing that takes longer than four seconds like this is my washing machine when it tells me it's only got 10 minutes left and I see it 30 minutes later still running. So in hindsight, is the Raspberry Pi a good voltage network share drive in 2024? Not on your life. But that's not the end of this just yet. Could we make this useful? Maybe a wireless access point? Or maybe something else. Let me know. Would you uh, like me to try and uh, make this useful? Tell me what you'd like to see me uh, try and attempt and make this actually do um, in the next part if you're interested. But for now, I'll catch you on the next one.